Well, good morning, good morning, folks. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, who was and is and is to come, are the words we're going to be singing for all eternity. So we're going to sing that this morning. If you would stand as we worship, we want to welcome you to this place as we sing to the King. This morning, give him praise this morning. He is holy. You may have a seat as Pastor Rob comes. Thank you, Pastor David. Hope you had a great week. And thank you for all of you who are guests here today. If you would take this card out that's sitting on in the pew in front of you, if you're a guest, and fill it out. We'd love to have a record of your visit. We have someone who came all the way from New York this morning. He heard online that we have a loving body of Christ. Dan's down here to help his brother, and uh, I don't want to prove him wrong. I walked up to Don and said, Don, no one greeted him, which is not true. But Dan is right. Raise your hand, Dan. He's right here. Tammy, hold up that tie. I, he listens closely, a lot closer than some of you. And, you know, I said, if you bring a tie, I'll wear it. So, I now have to wear a Winnie the Pooh tie at some point. I think I would like this guy. He says it's a conservative Presbyterian Calvinist who invented ties. And I think he's probably right. So, anyway, with that said, if you're a guest here, we're really, really happy that you're here. We pray you sense the love of the Lord, that you are ministered to by the Lord in the way that only the Lord can, and I hope you feel the love of God's people this morning. On the back of that card, there's a prayer request 
area, and we encourage you to fill that out. We count it a real honor to pray for you as a staff as well as some of our prayer warriors every week. Take that and fill that out, and we'll uh, be grateful that you did. We also have a special get, uh, gift that we would like to get to you. For you who have not yet filled out and signed the All in the Word uh, it's right over here. I guess we did that so people could see the bright, shiny faces of the choir. I don't know, but that's a good reason. So if you have not yet filled that out, please, sometime this morning, take the time and do that as an encouragement and an accountability as we are in the Word this year and asking God to work in our lives in uh, new and special ways. Many of you, and I'm glad that many of you have asked about the schedule for reading through the word that is usually printed in the bulletin. How many of you were interested in that and you just didn't say it? I, a number of people were. We now have one out at, at uh, guest services where you can pick it up and have it in your Bible so you can get ahead or stay behind. But uh, if you are interested in reading through the word, you don't have to wait on the bulletin anymore. It is printed out for you. Joyce Meek, where are you? She's sick, so you can tell Joyce she's one of them that asked. Uh, and with that said, Joyce is sick. There's a whole lot of people who have this crud that's going around. Brother Rolla, if you would pray for him, it's one thing to have it when you're young and, and uh, full of vitality like Tammy and myself are, but it's another thing to have it when you're 90 plus years old. And I know he would appreciate your prayers. Uh, the Cash Yates was supposed to be baptized this morning, and Ben and Cash were reinfected Friday, so that is going through their family. So this morning, someone said to me as we went through the Sunday school, why don't you just have us wave at each other? Listen, uh, I'm going to shake hands because i got enough antibodies in my body. I, it's going to be fine. But if you don't want to shake hands today, at least bump elbows or do something to greet each other in the name of the Lord in uh, just a moment when we take the time to do that. And again, thank you for being here. Phil Smith and David Webb are going to be ordained tonight into the deacon ministry. It's a very special time, and most of us are family here, so I'm going to talk to you about why people don't come a lot of times. First of all, some of you don't yet realize we have a Sunday night service, so I'm announcing today we have a Sunday night service at Dover Baptist Church. How many know that? It's a great service and a wonderful service, and I invite you to come. But a lot of times at deacon ordination services, the ones that I've been to, a lot of times you have 45 people pray, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a very special time. But the challenge is you can't hear the people that are praying, and uh, it gets rather lengthy, and people just find a reason not to come to them. That will not happen tonight. We'll have a very special time, and we will definitely pray over them. But it will be a meaningful and special time. And I want to encourage you to make it a priority and come because we thank God for the men that are willing to serve as deacons and the men who are willing to step up and fulfill that very important role in the New Testament church. So I invite you to come tonight and do that. Now take your bulletin very quickly, if you will. I want you to notice in the middle of the bulletin at the top left, it is time to start getting your deposits in for Centra Kids Summer Camp. Uh, we're excited about that. And we were busting at the seams with uh, children and many of them. And, and if you're here today with a child, thank you for entrusting our very capable and godly people that take care of Sunday school. But we had some new people, so we welcome you. And... Uh, this camp is a great time for kids. And then young at heart. Young at heart, I uh, lovingly called at my last church the Golden Moldies. They didn't like that for some reason. I am part of that. 50 years and above uh, is, uh, is a great ministry that is open for young at heart. Now, I didn't know Danny was going to be here today, but Danny Middlebrooks gave a... Uh, recommendation, and I think you wrote a foreword in the book, Danny, did you not? Wrote the foreword in that book, The Blue House. Michael Simmons will be here for this Young at Heart. The author, Danny, will be there also, and 
look forward to seeing you come. If you're not yet participating in that ministry, it's a great time. And people outside our body as well inside our body, God ministers in a great way. So we invite you to that. There are other announcements there that are pertinent and important, but you can read. So I'm going to let you do that this morning. If you are a first time or a new guest here, or you're not yet part of this membership, part of this body, I want to ask you to remain seated so we'll know who you are, where we can get around and greet you. Carrie and Greg, would you stand? I didn't ask them permission to do this because I, I don't know if they'd get it or not. These are our newest newlyweds, a little over a month. So would you give them a hand? We are happy for that. They said they're still in honeymoon bliss, and I told them I pray that continues a long, long time. But if you are a member here, please stand. If you're a guest, remain seated, and go around and bump elbows with each other in the name of the Lord today. If you would find your place, please. Brother Billy is going to come pray for us this morning. And I'm going to ask you that are in the youth group that are planning on coming tomorrow, you that are planning on being here for our dodgeball tournament, would you go ahead and make your way forward, please? You're planning on being here. Last year we had 18 teams plus a lot of walk-ons at our dodgeball extravaganza. And I'm calling it what I call it. I don't remember what you call it. Dodgeball extravaganza. 26 teams are signed up, pre-signed up this year. And we have a lot of walk-ons. So we're going to have a lot of young people tomorrow on this property that need Christ as their Savior. We have a number of youth here who know the Lord. So as we pray this morning over special things, would you pray specifically that God would give these youth an eternal perspective on what they do tomorrow? And that as they are privileged to minister to young people who come here without Christ, that they'll hear the gospel clearly, that they'll come to a personal relationship in Christ, and we'll be able to help them grow in that relationship with Jesus. It's the hope for America. It's the hope for the world, and I thank God for the way he's growing this area and helping us reach our use. Brother Billy's going to pray over a couple of other things also. Would you pray? And as you know these youth, would you pray for them by name as uh, we go to prayer this morning? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, so grateful for this just moment in time, Lord where we can focus in on, Lord, what you're doing in our lives. And so, Lord, I, I think of Philip and I think of David. And I can imagine what they were like as teenagers. And when did they ever think they would become deacons of a church, that people would look up to them and be leaders within the church. And so, Lord, we thank you for people who invested their time in these two young men. So I pray that tonight is a special night, Lord. As Lord, they've been leaders the whole time. We just kind of just putting a service around that, just tying a bow, saying, look, you're in it for the long haul here at this church. And so, Lord, we thank you for men who do that. And Lord, we thank you for their wives, Lord, that love them and, and cherish them and come alongside them to help grow this church. But Lord, my heart goes out to these young people that are going to show up on our campus tomorrow. Because many of them don't know your name. And they don't understand what a church is all about. And so, Lord, I pray specifically for that young person that's coming tomorrow, tomorrow and their life is going to be changed for eternity. So we lift up these young people that stand before us. And, Lord, we know even through a, a silly game as like dodgeball, Lord, 
you're going to bring life to somebody. And so, Lord, I pray for boldness for these young people that are believers, that, that maybe it's just a seed that's planted tomorrow, but maybe they're going to have to finish the story at school or wherever they hang out with their friends, Lord. So would you just take over tomorrow, Lord? Would your name become famous among our young people? And Lord, for this morning, Lord, for those who are sick and hurting, we, we lift them up. And we always pray for our community, Lord. Lord, we pray for the loss that we keep passing this church. We keep driving to the Strawberry Crest and Independence, and they pass it every day, and they don't have a clue of what's going on inside. Lord, may we go to them. May this be a morning that we rejoice together, and we sing songs from our heart, Lord, and we hear your word, and we radically change. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And as the band gets back to their place here on the stage, I just want to make you aware that this coming Wednesday, uh, we are having our next Bring Your Friend to Choir Day. So if you're interested, if you like to sing, if you like to sing praises to the Lord, you can be a part of this awesome group, the choir. So uh, they get points for bringing guests. So find one of these people, ask them, hey, what do I do? How do I, uh, how do I come? Where do I go? And, uh, and they'll bring you to choir. We also have... Uh, t-shirts that the singing group Rejoice we are selling and have been selling. So if you ordered any of those shirts, we will have them ready for you back in the lobby after the service. We are raising money for different things uh, happening this coming year. So if you'd like to buy one of those shirts that's on the mannequin out in the lobby, just let me know they are $20 each. So enough of that. We're going to praise the Lord. So if you'll stand to your feet, we're going to sing about the Lamb of God.
Father Heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us, Lord, and all the, the things that you've gifted us with. We also praise you now for the time that we have to give back a portion of that which you've given us. We pray that you'll take it and use it for the furtherance of your gospel. These things we pray in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, choir. I hope that matches the desire of your heart today. Good news if it does. The Lord promises if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. So I pray you are doing that at the beginning of this year. Take your Bibles, if you will, and turn to the book of Ephesians. Go to chapter 3 and put your finger there. And turn back to Hebrews chapter 4, which is where we were last week, talking about this incredible word of God that God has given us. Now, doing that for a reason, so if you'll turn back to Hebrews 4. As you turn there, uh, please continue to pray for the Maxi family, the Slain family. I know they would appreciate your prayers for them as they continue to adjust to the new norm of living life without Chris. Good news is he is in heaven. And uh, we will be reunited together one day, all worshiping around the throne. It doesn't lessen their need of prayer right now, though. So please pray for that. Also, apples of gold books for those involved in this cycle are are available in the uh, lobby after today's service. So look at Hebrews chapter 4, if you will, as we talk today about praying that makes an eternal difference in those that you love. Now you can say your family members, but I hope you love more than just your blood relatives. I hope you love your blood relatives, first of all, but those that are outside of that purview, and how do we do that in an effective way, and why is that so important? Well, look at Hebrews 4, which says this, beginning in verse 11, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. What rest? God's rest. How many of you know it is, there's nothing spiritual about li- living your life under stress and worry? How many of you know that? Some people seem to think that if you are spiritual, you're going to worry a lot. That is contradictory to Scripture. Scripture says to give your burdens to the Lord and he makes them light. And you can enter into rest in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of challenges, uh, I've been praying for Nancy Self as she tries to get well and go and speak and all kinds of things. And all those things add stress in our lives, especially for those who speak. You hope you have a voice, you hope. But listen, you can't enter into God's rest. And here's what he says there. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. You fall by not obeying, but what does God give you to make sure you enter his rest? He gives you his word. Notice the next verse. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And we spent last week talking about this living, powerful, energizing, at work, changing word which God gives us, which is what I hope you will base your life on this year. Whether you've ever done that before, may this be the year that you spend intentional, daily, prioritized time in the Word. And I remind you, what you sow is what you reap. You give God the leftovers, you're going to get leftovers, and you don't need leftovers. You need to feed yourself where you are energized, where you are filled with the Lord, and where you are spilling over blessing others. You never bless people by trying to bless them. You bless others when you are so full of Jesus that what comes out of your life when you're squeezed is the overflow of Jesus in your life. That's how you are blessed and you blessing to others and use God uses you to bless others. So we see this priority of the word. Now notice what it goes on to say. Seeing then, verse 14, that we have a great high priest. The only time in scripture Jesus is referred to as our great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Not talking about your salvation. This is already people who are saved. It's talking about your testimony. How many of you know it's easy to lose your testimony for Jesus? Easy, and I I hope, by God's grace, and I've said, I was meeting with a national director of the ministry that Tammy and I worked in, and I said to him, and I pray it often, God, I, I would never, ever want to have a life that brings discredit to your name and glory. It doesn't mean I'm going to live perfectly. But I do not want a life that brings discredit to the one who died for me. And I've often said, Lord, take me home before you allow that to happen in my life. I don't want to be the reason that people give an excuse not seeking Jesus. And it encourages here to hold fast our 
confession, our testimony, because God's given us all that we need to do that through the word. And then it says in verse 14, or verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus faced the full extent of temptation and never sinned. We are here today with real hope and are not wasting our time here today because you have a living Savior who's on the throne today, victorious over death, says he is the first fruit. You can go with him victorious over death because he's a sinless, perfect Savior. Now, because we have that, look at verse 16. Let us therefore, because of the word, because of this living word, Jesus, let us therefore Come boldly, it means with freedom of expression, it doesn't mean irreverently. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy, not getting what you deserve, grace getting what you don't deserve, that you may obtain grace, grace and mercy right in your time of need. Right in the nick of time is the idea in the Greek. So Jesus says to us that if we're gonna enter his rest, we, he's given us certain spiritual tools to engage our relationship with him. The first one is the need of the word in your life. And if you're not going to do that this year, then you are not going to have the rest that God wants you to have. Bottom line, I was talking earlier this week with someone and uh, they talked about busyness and how busyness can keep you away from spending time in the word. How many of you know that's true? But guess what? If you're too busy to spend time in the Word of God, you're too busy. Most of the time, that's not true anyway. You give me the schedule of someone's week, I'll say, well, can't you get up 20 minutes earlier? Can't you cut out 20 minutes? I hate to say this. I said this one time, and Tammy was kicking me as I said it. I said, ladies, I absolutely believe that uh, you need to do all you can do to look as absolute good as you can look. And she's kicking me already because she knows what's coming. But I said, 15 minutes more ain't going to make that much difference. And she said that was unkind. How many of you know that's true sometimes? How many of you know, by way of priority, we spend way too much time in some things? How many of you know that's true? Now, it may not be. You may need 30 minutes more. And if you do, God bless you. But yeah, here's the point. The point is, take the time that is necessary to prioritize what needs prioritizing. That's the point. Prioritize, make sure you're spending time in the word and then give, God gives us this wonderful gift called communication with him, prayer. You can do that anytime, anywhere. You can communicate with the God of the universe and we should. And one of the ways to make sure you are praying according to God's will is to personalize the prayers in the Bible. You don't have to worry about whether they're according to God's will, right? It's scripture. We know it's true. We know it's according to God's will. And what I have found in life is most prayer meetings in God-fearing evangelical circles. I'm not just talking about Southern Baptists. I'm talking about all of our friends that know the Lord. You know what they become many times? They become organ recitals. God bless this spleen, and God bless this liver, and God heal this arm, and all those things we should be praying for. But if you look at Scripture carefully, it is not what is prioritized as you look at Scripture and see what God wants to do in all of our lives. It is not. So as we talk about this prayer, one of the things that is really frustrating to me as a believer is it gets kind of spongy because, yeah, I know I need to pray, but I've already prayed for their broken arm and I've already prayed that they'd have a good day. And what do I pray for that makes an eternal difference in an effective way in those people that I love? How many of you want to know that? Well, Scripture tells us that. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. Get your Bible out today. Turn in your Bible to this passage, and I'm going to give you some key words that you can put down to remind you what all of this means so that 
You can pray effectively. Paul gives us five different things here that he's praying for with regard to the Ephesian believers. And if you notice, the very first thing I want you to put in your notes, point number one is be persistent in prayer. Ask, seek, knock, Matthew 7, 7. uh, Present active indicative in the Greek. You know what it literally says? Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Why? Because God doesn't hear? No, not at all. Because God wants those things that are important that he's laying on your heart to be always on your heart. And he wants you continually bringing them up before him where he can speak to you and change your heart and make sure you're doing what you can and his answer to that prayer that he asks. So be persistent in prayer. Isaiah 59, 16. God marveled, he says there, that there was no intercession. You remember the verse? He saw that there was no man and wondered why there was no intercessor. You ever thought about that? You can go before the throne of grace anytime you want to a God who is all-powerful and all-knowing and loves you and desires to do what's best in your life and the ones you're praying for. So why don't we pray more? That's God's question in Isaiah. Why not? I don't know. We're flesh. We Operate by what we see many times, but I wanna remind you as I see this great saint, Paul, down on his knees, praying from prison, that his his spirit soars out of prison, that stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. In other words, you can't imprison a man if he knows how to pray. You can't imprison. God can work through you in situations that are absolutely impossible other than the intervention of God through your prayers. You say it's just too far gone. Oh, no, it's not. Not with the intervention of God, which comes through the absolute privilege you have of prayer. You can make a difference in your family, in your children, in those you love, in your spouse, in your parents, as God intervenes with them. I've had the privilege throughout life for God to lay on people's hearts many times, and many people will come to me and say, God laid on my heart and I've prayed for you for this many years, every single day. And I often wonder when I stand before the Lord how much of the things that God has allowed me to participate in and see the blessings of are going to be traced back to that little old lady or little old couple down on their knees each day interceding for you. Prayer. May Allen's one of those people in heaven now. Hickory Apache Indian. First husband got run over. He was such a drunk as was May as 90% of American Indians are and May's son lived with his grandmother because May was an unfit mother. May got a hold of Wilmington's Guide to the Bible, Bible course in a little bitty block house in the mountains of New Mexico, read the story of Jesus and turned from her sin and made Jesus her Savior, became a student of the Word of God. You will recognize that if you're a student of Smithsonian. She has a whole display at the Smithsonian Institute because she still made things from hand as the Hickorias have done for decades and decades. And I went to visit her one day on the reservation as doing ministry there and she said to me years ago, Pastor Rob, I want you to know I pray for you every single day. Two different times she sent moccasins and gave an Indian name to our son and sent him homemade moccasins and bought us a painting which someone stole in one of our moves of Nosman V. Hill, who's an original artist there. And every time those things came, it was just a reminder of how blessed we are when people take the time to intercede for one another. Are you praying? As I said, it gets rather spongy. I want you to notice what Paul says here because how do you pray in an effective way where it makes a difference in people's lives? Jaden was uh, used to go visit Joe and Marie Oakley with me and 
Joe was, remind me a lot of people of some of our older folks here. They tell me they think the sermon was good because people around them responded in a positive way, but they really can't hear anything. You know, people like that, don't poke them right now. But I know some sitting here just like that. Joe couldn't hear anything, but he never missed anything. Marie was down to about 70 pounds, little bitty thing that laid in the bed every day. Every day, and I went and visited her weekly, and every time I did, I walked away incredibly convicted and encouraged because you know what that little 70-pound wasting away physically woman did? She spent her time praying for the church that she loved and the people in that church. Prayer. How do you do that effectively where you don't run out and you know you're praying for the things that God wants you to? To pray. One of the ways is to take the prayers in the Bible and personalize them. And this is one of those prayers for spiritual enrichment. I want you to notice where this text starts in verse 8. Unto me who am least than the least of the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. Now here's the key phrase. The unsearchable riches of Christ. No matter how deep you go into the riches of who you are in Christ and what he's done for you in his will, you'll never get to the bottom of it. It is so deep, you can't ever explore the entirety of who you are in Christ and what Jesus has done for you in Christ. But Paul's foundation of this whole prayer is that these people have got to understand who they are in Christ. They've got to understand what he's done for them and who they are in him. This unsearchable riches. Now notice as he goes on here, it gets a little convoluted because it's as if Paul can't get it out fast enough. These Phrases in which he's trying to describe the incredible riches that we have in Jesus and how he wants the believers at Ephesus to come to know those things in greater ways. Please move to verse 14. Here's the key thought. For this cause, because of all that we are in Christ, I bow my knees unto the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's thinking about who he is, what he's done, and he's praying that these people would come to know who they are in Christ. And you find the prayer in verses 16 through 19 that he may that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Verse 17 that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may feel, be filled with the fullness of God. Now, notice the confidence that Paul has in that prayer, verses 20 and 21. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, his power working in us does more than we could ever imagine. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages. That includes you and me. That's just not for the Ephesian believers. It's for you and me. Throughout all ages, without world, amen. Folks, we need to learn to pray for one another more effectively. We need to learn to pray for our children and our grandchildren, our spouses and our next door neighbors, those that are key in our life. There's nothing more important that we can learn to do. So I want you to notice how Paul breaks down these five things. First of all, he prayed for spiritual wealth for their neediness. Spiritual wealth for their neediness. Notice how he does that. We've touched on it, verse eight, the unsearchable riches of Christ, and then he talks some more about those unsearchable riches. And to make all see, verse nine, what is the fellowship of the mystery, 
which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God may be, might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a long phrase. It can get rather complicated. You know what the bottom line he's saying? Hey, these truths were hidden. Now they're made true, known in Jesus Christ to the church so that the church can take these truths to a world that needs to be changed by Jesus. These riches that we have in Christ, we need to understand them and we need to take them out to a world that needs to understand them. Verse 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence. Boldness because the power is not in us, it's in Jesus. Access because of his blood which he gave you and me. And you come to him with confidence knowing all that he is. That's why you gotta spend time in the word. There's no substitute for you and me getting in the word and the word getting into us and understanding at our core of our core who we are in Christ. I had a guy say to me one time, I don't need to know anything else. I just need to know the gospel, that I'm saved. And I said, well, how do you leave each day? I try my best. No, you don't. You may be doing that. That's not the way God said for you to live. He said you're saved by the gospel. You live through the gospel. Each and every day you get up and you surrender your life to the truth of the word of God and it guides you and the Holy Spirit guides you through his power. That's the way you're supposed to live. And who you, have, who you are in Christ is told all throughout Scripture. It says in verse 13, therefore I ask you that you don't lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is for your, which is your glory. In other words, don't look at the outward circumstances. Yeah, I'm writing from prison, but God's got eternal purposes in mind, and you need to remember that and understand that. This is good stuff, not bad stuff. For this reason, out of who we are in Christ, I bow my knees to the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what Paul is praying there? Oh God, help them to understand. Help them to know who they are and what they have in the Lord Jesus. They need to understand their spiritual wealth. They are needy and I am needy, but we are not beyond hope. In fact, we have riches unsearchable and you need to understand that. Do you know why your children and your friends, and sometimes you get into worldliness. You say, well, pastor, I'm doing my best. I come to church services, and I go to Sunday school, and uh, I do all of these things. You know why we get into worldliness? Because we don't know the riches that we have in Jesus. We don't know the wealth that we have that is only true wealth that comes in him. That's why people get into things that God never intended them to get in, because they're looking for fulfillment that God made in your heart only to come through Jesus. We need to know who we are, what we have in Jesus. You remember Moses grew up in the wealth of Egypt as Pharaoh's daughter's child, it says, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter because he esteemed the riches of Christ a greater treasure than all the treasures of Egypt. Do you know Christ that way? You can. And as we pray for people, one of the greatest things you can pray for is that would God would give them spiritual wealth, an understanding of who Christ is and what they have in Jesus. Here's the way I think I said it in your notes. Oh God, help them to understand, help them to know all that they have in the Lord Jesus. Open their eyes to just how rich they are. And guess what, that's not only a good prayer for others, it's a good prayer for yourself each and every day. Help me understand the spiritual wealth that I have in you. As one of my great old preachers now in heaven would say, you need to understand all that Jesus has done for you and you'll be feasting on him rather than in the back alley eating tin cans with the devil's billy goats. You don't want to be eating there. 
A lot of Christians do. Because they don't know what they have in Jesus. So mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, friend, I want to encourage you to make it part of your daily walk of prayer to ask God for those you care about that God would give them spiritual wealth for their neediness, not other things that will never meet the true needs of their heart. And here's what that really means. How many of you still listening? Because here's the tough part. You know what you're saying to the Lord? Not that he needs your permission. Not that he needs my permission. But you know what you're saying to the Lord at that point? God, whatever it takes to draw that person closer to you, that's what I pray you'll do. You say, well, I'm not going to pray that way because God may answer. God's committed to getting people to him. He doesn't need your permission. But you know what? If you're really committed, to that's what's important. I remember years and years ago coming to this place where I said to the Lord, God, I don't care if people know my kids' names. I don't care if they're the best ditch digger in the world. Every one of us in here are proud of our kids, and it makes us swell with pride when people talk, and I have what I believe are incredibly gifted and talented kids. But let me tell you something, folks. One of the reasons we have kids that are dying and going to hell nowadays is some people are more concerned about their health, wealth, and happiness than their holiness, and God is concerned for their holiness. So we send them off to prestigious liberal schools and they're ruined for life and they make a good living and die and go to hell. You say you're against prestigious schools? Absolutely not. But I am against misplaced values and you better make sure that your value of your heart is I want God's best for my children. Spiritual wealth no matter what. No matter what. God, you take over from there. You know what's best. And I pray that you'll bring spiritual wealth. Now, there's a great song that God's used in my life to remind me of that often. It's an old, old song. I want you to listen to the words of this song as you contemplate praying for spiritual wealth for those that you love. That's what I'll be willing to do. 
So as we pray for spiritual wealth, it may sound, from a purely American mindset, it may sound like a drag. I just want to remind you what you trade is temporary happiness for eternal fulfillment. Something that no one can take away from you. It comes from the inside out. It comes from your relationship with Christ and it comes from knowing who you are in Jesus and what Jesus has done for you. Spiritual wealth for neediness, the first prayer request. How many of you think you can remember that? And flesh it out because it's a much deeper than that. Flesh it out in the way that you are praying for that. A great thing that is according to God's will that God will answer. And here's what I think sometimes. I don't know if you think this way. How many of you think, yeah, that's a great prayer request, but I prayed a long time for this person and it ain't working. How many of you feel that way? I do. But you know what happens? God brings something up and reminds me just how big he is. And all the things that he's doing that you can't see, he's the only one that sees into the heart. And he is committed to changing hearts. So cooperate with him. Spiritual wealth for neediness. Prayer request number two. You say, Pastor, you've got to get through five. Guess what? We're only going through two of them today, so calm down. (laughs) Prayer request number two. God's strength for their weakness. God's wealth for their neediness. Understand who you are, what you have in the Lord Jesus. God's strength for their weakness. Verse 16, that he, God, would grant you, circle the phrase if you write in your Bible, or at least the two words, According to the riches of his glory. According to the riches of his glory. That's how Paul's praying that God would meet this need. According to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might through his spirit. Make sure you circle that. It's not your spirit. God's not praying that you would be stronger. He's praying that God's spirit in you would be stronger, that you would base your strength on where it really comes from through his spirit in the inner man. He's praying now that God, he's already talked about the riches, but he's praying that God would grant this person according to their riches. And like I've said, I've been in a lot of prayer meetings and the 95% of them are God for to bless spleens and gizzards. But how many times have you heard people pray this? God, strengthen my son and my daughter. Make them mighty in your spirit. Make them uh, give them, may, may there be a vessel that you can use for glory all over this world. Will you raise up another Billy Graham? Will you raise up another Corey Ten Boom? And will you do something through my daughter or my son that will outlast all that they ever lived because it's for your glory? You can't do that if you got your hands wrapped around your son and daughter so tight that you don't release them to what God has for them to do. So many Christian parents, God, do it as long as you keep them within traveling distance. God, do it as long as they'll remain safe. And I gotta be honest with you, I pray for safety for my children, but do you know the safest place they can be is right in the middle of God's will, no matter where that is. That's not just a trite saying, it's absolutely true. So have you released your children Have you said to God, God, I don't know how to ever do something like that. I happen to be a person that doesn't mind change. I like change. I don't think you can ever become what God wants you to be unless you're involved and willing to change. There's a whole lot of people that change scares you to death, but do you know God wants to stretch you into ways that you can't imagine? In fact, the word in 
becoming conformed to the image of Christ. It's the word in the Greek of a press, and you don't fit in that press. And God sticks you in that press anyway, and he pushes down on the press to conform you to his image, to make you into the image of Jesus. So he's going to be somewhat uncomfortable. But this prayer request is that your loved ones, your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad, your neighbor, that they would live in God's strength for their weakness, that God would make them mighty in spirit. Notice here, it does not say out of his riches. God owns it all, and that would not be a bad phrase. So I walk up to someone today and They say to me, I want to bless you, and I'm going to bless you out of the things God has given me, and here's 400 bucks to take your wife to Burns Restaurant. And I'd say, hallelujah. I'll go to Burns once, have never been there, and $400 might cover part of the bill from what I've heard, And, and, and that is out of that person's riches. Do you understand that's not what Jesus says here? Jesus said... He wants to give you strength and me strength according to his riches. It's unending. It's immeasurable. It is giant, not just part of what he has, but according to his riches, he will give you strength for today. He will give you what you need for today in your life. That's the kind of God he is. According to his riches. Riches. So here's the prayer request. So God, make my children, my grandchildren, my spouse, my neighbor, the friend that I love so much, make them strong spiritually. Make them a giant for you. Give them day-to-day might in the inner man. You know what he's really talking about? He's talking about being filled with the Spirit. He's talking about you getting up each and every day and getting off the throne of your life because if you're on the throne of your life, Jesus is not. If Jesus is on the throne of your life, self is not. You say, well, I want to be on the throne of my life. Here's what Jesus said. You hold on to your life. What happens? You lose. You lose it. Where you and I get what God has intended for us is to get off the throne of our life, surrender daily to the lordship of Christ in our life, and we, at that point, get to experience and start to experience genuine, real life. God's strength for their weakness. Second prayer request. Talking about being filled with the Spirit, being mighty in the inner man. So I want to ask you today, here's where this challenges me. I can pray those prayer requests and I can go through those rote things and, and, and you should. You should be persistent in them. Remember, that's what we talked about at the beginning, being persistent and praying these things. But here's the challenge. When you're praying for God's glory in your children's lives, and when you're praying for the things that God wants in those that you love, when you're praying, first of all, for uh, spiritual wealth in their life, you know what you're really saying to the Lord? Lord, spiritual wealth, whatever it takes. You willing to pray that in your life? Say, that seems rather scary. No, it's not really. Satan whispering in your ear. The very best thing you can do in your life is surrender to Jesus. Only way you'll ever experience abundance in your life is surrendering to Jesus. The only way you'll become what God wants you to become is knowing Jesus and understanding more of what he wants and has for you. That's why the word of God individual in your life, there's no substitute for. Prayer in your life, there's no substitute for. Spiritual wealth for their neediness. And then spiritual strength. For their weakness. God, as they are weak in you, you say, well, pastor, you just don't understand. I'm incredibly weak. Do you know that's where God wants you? Because whether or not you recognize it, that's where you are. If you're trying to live life on your own, 
you are headed for disaster. In our weakness, he's made weaker. In our weakness, he's made strong. Spiritual strength for our weakness. First two prayer requests. Here's what I want to ask you to do before we have the invitation today. I want to ask you to practice those in your life. So write them down in your Bible in some way where you can pray them. And then if you have a wife next to you, husband, would you pray? Those two things for your lives and those you're concerned about. Wives, if you're here alone, would you pray for the people around you? You say, well, I'm uncomfortable praying with the person next to me. I don't even like them. Then pray by yourself. That's fine. God will hear your prayers. But really, you guys talk while I'm preaching. So now you have a chance to talk to the Lord during prayer at an appropriate time. So would you take those first two, and I'm joking. Somebody's looking at me like, why are you saying that? It's a joke, all right? It's a joke. It's trying to get people comfortable to pray. So would you pray right now those two prayer requests, and would you make them part of your life as you go forward in praying for those you love? Take a couple minutes to do that right now, please. Lord Jesus, it's difficult to put into words how grateful we are for all of the resources you give us in you, and yet it's so easy for us not to take advantage and let things distract us from the things that you want to make us strong in you. So I pray as we begin another year, and what a privilege we have of loving one another and serving Jesus together. We don't want to be an anemic group of believers that are just existing. We want to be a spirit-filled, on-fire group of believers that are fulfilling the great commandment and the great commission in this body. So help us to spur each other on to good works. Help us to undergird each other with this great privilege of prayer. Pray we'll never take it for granted, and Lord, that we will learn that we have strength in you according to the riches of your glory. Just in greater ways to understand what that means in Jesus' name. Before we go into the invitation today, if you'll look at me for just a moment. I don't know if this happens to you in your Christian walk, but what has happened to me throughout the years is there are certain things that God brings to my heart and my attention. And here's what I found when I was young. I would blame it on anchovies. Who, who put in the Facebook this week about anchovies being on pizza and ruining pizza? Someone did that in Facebook here and said, it's a great thing to have. I forget who my friends, but I used to ignore those things and not even recognize I was ignoring. But as you stay connected with Jesus, 
And as you are praying without ceasing, what that means is turning your internal conversation each day that you have with yourself to conversation with the Lord. There will be these promptings that God gives you and they seem crazy. Last semester, we were out in faith and God prompted Russell to go and share the gospel with some people that he deeply cares about and there was a different plan at the beginning, but Russell went out and eight people accepted Christ that night. Because you listen. Well, there's a couple here that's here today that God prompted on my heart to spend some extra time in prayer for them this weekend and God's answered prayer. And do you, do you think God needs my prayers? No. Doesn't need yours either for his glory. But guess what he gives you the privilege of doing? He gives you the privilege and me the privilege of participating in eternity. To be used for things that never, ever, ever go away. And they bring fulfillment to you in ways you cannot put on a piece of paper or quantify. They're things that last forever because that's the way he's made you. Well, the only way that's going to happen is if you and I stay connected. The way that God gave us to stay connected is through his word and prayer. So I'm going to encourage you. Go out of here. Don't just write that down. But go out of here and personalize that. And if you don't already have that as part of your prayer time, we'll go through the next three, next Sunday, Lord willing. Talk a little bit more about that, but use that as an encouragement in your heart and your life this week. Would you bow your head and close your eyes this morning? And if you are one of those people who have heard these truths for a long time, but you have not yet developed your personal walk with God in the way that you know God wants you to, then I'm going to invite you as people sit even before we stand, I'm going to invite you to move people and come to this altar and just thank God for the resources you have in him and ask him for daily grace to do what you know he wants you to do in becoming more vitally involved in his kingdom through time with him. And people are doing that right now. So if that's you, you say, well, people are gonna know I have needs. Guess what, we all do. That's not the point. Point is, you're gonna care more about what God says to you than what anybody else knows and thinks. Is that going to be what matters to you? And if you say yes, and God has spoken to me, then I'm gonna invite you to come. As people come right now to this altar to pray, would you come? If God's spoken to you and you know you need to come with regard to that, if you have a prayer need that you would like someone to confidentially share with you, go out lifting that burden with you, just raise your hand. There will be people who will be glad to do that if that's you. Secondly, would you say, Pastor, you know, you talk about knowing Jesus and praying and Here's the truth. I don't know if Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, lived a sinless life and died on a cross called Calvary. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. He shed his blood on the cross for your sin. He was buried and rose again the third day victorious over death. And he says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you have available to you the life in Jesus, victory over death, becoming a child of his, this power that we talked about today available to you only through Jesus. And if you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I know Jesus. I'm concerned for my soul today. Please pray for me. Anybody like that, unashamedly, raise your hand where I can pray for you. Anybody at all like that? I'm praying for salvation today. I want to make sure I know Jesus. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm not sure I know Jesus, but I am concerned about that. Thank you. Thirdly, there's many of you here that have been looking for a home church and you know this is it. If God has spoken to you today and you know that 
you want to make that known, we invite you at the beginning of this invitation to do that. But first, before we have you stand, you that raised your hand, would you look at me for just a moment? Nothing more important than what you raised your hand for, ma'am. And I'm going to ask you in just a moment to come. I'm going to ask someone that I know speaks your heart language to come and talk with you about what all of that means in a, in a private place so you can make sure you understand what we're talking about in the free gift of salvation that Jesus offers you. So I'm going to ask everyone here if you would stand, heads bowed and eyes closed. Ma'am, I'm going to invite you, as Christians pray, as heads are bowed, bowed, eyes are closed. Man, I'm going to invite you who raised your hand for salvation. If you would meet me right here, I'm going to get somebody, one of you believers who know the Lord well, if you don't mind meeting me here where we can talk to our sister, if you just come right here. And one of, if one of you. Let's pray together for this sister who uh, is interested in making sure that she knows Jesus personally. Would you keep your heads bowed and pray for her? Lord, I thank you for the way you speak to people's hearts and lives. And we pray for our sister today that you would minister grace to her, that she would have a full understanding of what it means to accept Christ and know Christ personally and help her continue to grow in her relationship with you. I'm going to ask you to take a seat right there, and I'm going to get someone to talk with you in just a little while, all right? Thank you very much, ma'am. If you are called of the Lord today to come and join this body, or if you have other needs in your life, we're going to sing an invitation song, song right now, and we invite you to come. We'd love to pray with you, know what the needs are. If you want to join the body, we would welcome you with open arms if this is where the Lord wants you to be. So whatever your needs are today as we sing, would you come? You came from heaven's throne Acquainted with our sorrow To train Suffering for our freedom, the Lamb of God in my place, your blood poured out, my sin erased, it was my death, you died, I am raised to Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing people to the foot of the cross today. People that desire to make sure they know you personally. People that are joining our body and we thank you for the way you continue to grow us. Lord, if there be people still out there today that need to make decisions for you, I pray in this last verse of invitation that they would obey you. They would come forward and Obey what it is you're speaking to them about. We thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. And would you respond? If you still have a need in your life and you know the Lord wants you here, this last verse is for you as we sing. The Lamb of God in my place Your blood poured out My sin erased it was my
Thank you. you may be seated this morning. Thank you for being with us. Again, we invite you out tonight for our ordination service. Uh, Olivia Daniels, if you will make your way up here, please. Miss Olivia is shy, so this is a big deal for her, but I had the privilege of meeting with her a couple months ago probably and talking about Christ's claims on her life, and she didn't have any doubt about it, but uh, just wanted to make sure that there was full understanding in what she was doing and the decision she was making and coming and making a public profession for Christ and coming for believers' baptism. So that is what she is here for today. Would you encourage her by welcoming her up here and giving her a hand? We're happy for you. You can come join her if you want. And we have, we have been praying for uh, that God would continue to grow in our midst, our college and career. It's the largest group in the United States that are turning away from the things of the faith. God has been doing some wonderful things in that group and continuing to grow us. And Olivia is another answer to prayer with regard to that. Meredith invited her and she came. She's been involved for how long now, Olivia? Since April. Since April. God has led her to join this body. So would you welcome Miss Olivia here as you come, Olivia. All right, I am going to slaughter these names new, so I'm just telling you, I apologize up front for not knowing how to say your names, and if you, uh, if someone else, anybody else want to try? That's what I thought. New has been a blessing to me. God has brought new in this group of people to us, and new is going to speak with our sister later today and make sure she understands the claims of Christ, and I thank you for your openness to the Lord. It's a blessing to see that. But Nu Yang and his wife, Mai Li, would you make your way forward? They are coming to join our body as part of the kindred and tongue and nation of people that love the Lord. Nu has been involved. It's a neat story. You need to sit down and talk with our brother, how he came to Christ in the early 80s. Were you in Laos or Cambodia? I don't remember. Laos. He was out of Laos, but he's really part of the Hmong people group that we've been praying for. So uh, we thank God for the work that he's doing, and uh, I pray that we'll make them feel part of the body, which they are, and we appreciate you giving us that, and we look forward to seeing what the Lord has in store. All right, Mr. or Mrs. Q, who is this? Tell me your name. Okay. Cha. Cha? He has an easy name. What is your name? Son. Son. Yours is Son. Yes. I met with these two believers also, and we thank God for them. They're, uh, in fact, one of them speaks English better than me, which is not a uh, hard thing to do, but I was impressed with the vocabulary. These couples came and sat down and talked with me about their desire to see their people come to know the Lord. And uh, as I told you in church, there are a couple hundred in this region, and I pray that this will become a gospel-sending center for the entire world. But the particular people group God has given us uh, entrance to as part of our family now are the Hmong people group, Laos, Cambodia, a large group in Wisconsin. It's too cold. That's why they moved here. Can you imagine moving from, the, from a... Uh, region where it is incredibly warm all the time to Wisconsin. And then Minnesota, another real warm place. They have sponsors there, so a large group there, a large group in California, but there are a half million Hmong in the United States now. So I look forward to seeing what God has in store there. So these two couples, our college and career area, you can scoot over here, you're part of the body, and that's fine, thank you. And my friend, and I'm proud of you for coming up here. I know this has been hard, but we're, we're going to come by and welcome you today. If you're thankful for what the Lord has done today, would you say amen? amen. Good morning.
I want to invite you to come by and welcome our new family members. We look forward to seeing what God has in store. You don't want to miss tonight. We'll see you tonight. Guests, I hope I will see you with my wife back. Oh, there's another family? Well, I don't want to miss them, so tell me who they are. All right, thank you. Cha, Leah Lee, and Dia Yang, is that correct? I didn't mean to forget you folks who got stuck in here somehow. They are from Plant City. One of the families are from Ruskin. Raise your hand if you're from Ruskin. And uh, you guys are from Plant City. So another family joining us. Go ahead and come over this way if you don't mind. We are very thrilled to have you. Any others? You have yours too, all right. Hey, we, we'll take all the time in the world, folks. So now good luck with this. Bo Yang. How do you really say your name, Bo? That's like French almost. B-E-A-U. You guys are laughing. Let me spell it and you say it, all right? B-E-A-U-J-E-O-I-S. Goes by Bo. Smart man. And... Andrea? All right. So I'm going to take a couple more minutes. You all are husband and wife? Yes. How long have you been married? How many years? Since 1989. Since 1989. Is that right? No. What, what is correct? 1990. Okay. So see, husbands in every culture get it mixed up. Who do you think's right? Probably her. But we understand, sir. We're, we're, we got you. Tell me your name. Emily, are you part of this, anyone in your family? This is your niece? How old are you? I'm 18. And where are you from? Michigan. Michigan, you came here from Michigan. So we are glad that you are here, Emily. You guys are? Mary. And? Chuck. And how long have you been married? 40 years. 40? Yeah. And did you start married here or were you in another country when you started? We started here. Started here. Yeah, we came as a single. <laughs> oh, we are glad that you are here, and now you're in Plant City. Yes. Okay. And what year were you married, sir? <laughs> what? 77. 77? All right, give him a kudos. That's good. And you guys? How long? Been married? Been married for 37 years. Married here in the States? Yes. And you live now in Ruskin? And what year did you get married? 1980. Is he right? I thought it was 79. All right. <laughs> How long you been married, New? Oh, man, 1970. 1970. Yes. Get married in the States. No, in Laos. In Laos. Came over married. So, folks, these are new family members. I, I expect you to know all of their names, when they were married, the whole deal. Would you please come by and welcome them? We're very grateful for bringing them to the body. God bless all of you. David, are you going to play us out today? We're going to, going to play us out. God bless you. We will see you tonight. Guests, we'll see you in the back. God bless. Mm -hmm.